Hey, what's up? This is BQ. Welcome to the Impact Lounge. This week, we are talking about eight stars slash tag teams that the WWE would ruin. I think I'm going to do a part two, so let me know in the comments who should also be on this list. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this if you're a first-timer. Over the years, we've seen several Impact Wrestling stars depart for greener pastures, and although they were handed to the WWE on a silver platter, they have still managed to be ruined on WWE television. Chances are we're going to see one one more former Impact World Champion be next on that list, but only time will tell. Most educated wrestling fans can see these train wrecks coming ahead of time, but for the stars, the lure of the WWE is too great sometimes, and the offers are too difficult to turn down. Stand by until the very end because I have an announcement about the future of the Impact Lounge going forward, but let's get into it. Eight stars that the WWE would ruin. The North have established themselves as the number one tag team in Impact Wrestling, not just because of their in-ring ability, but because Impact Creative and management has given them a chance to be the best at what they do. Now, talented teams have been wasted in the WWE ranks as the company has remained committed to pushing the same comedic acts no matter how stale they may get. Ethan Page and Josh Alexander would probably fare well on the NXT brand, but they would certainly not get the same kind of run in WWE that they've currently had in Impact Wrestling. The Tag Team of the North has been able to showcase both that in-ring ability, but promo work as well, and they've been given every opportunity to succeed in Impact. WWE's Tag Team Division, well, the booking hasn't been too good, where just about every team gets a run with the title, so it would be really tough for a team like the North to stand out. Falaba is a project that WWE would certainly fail with in every single way. He debuted in Impact Wrestling with tag partner Mario Bokura, but they were constantly on the losing end of all their matches. He then transitioned from heel to babyface, but in a comedy role, was later teamed up with KM and eventually Scarlet Bordeaux, but while he was teamed with KM, Impact Creative, and by input of Austin Aries, did something that WWE would never do and give a lower to mid card guy close to 20 minutes in a world title match with then champion Austin Aries. The match was so impressive that Fala began to be taken more seriously and given more time in the ring. Currently, he's paired with TJP in a storyline that has allowed him to slowly start speaking English and progress his character even further. WWE would never be able to take a guy like Falaba and make him anything more than a comedy character, and they certainly would not book him into any meaningful feuds or in any matches that got more than three minutes of airtime. He would be more likely to have a dance battle with R-Truth than to seriously challenge for any of their championships. Impact Wrestling deserves all the credit in the world for the character progression of Falaba. The Undead Bride has similarities to another name on this list. I'm sure you can guess who it is. Now, Impact Wrestling fans initially questioned if two supernatural type characters could simultaneously coexist in the knockouts division. I myself had already been familiar with Sue's work in the indies, especially in Shine, but I definitely questioned the long game for the Sue Young character and was unsure of how much mileage Impact could get out of it. Now, with the use of coffins, the undead bridesmaids, the undead realm, and other backstage theatrics, they've kept the Sue Young character entertaining and relevant. Now, Sue has never spoken English on screen. She really hasn't spoken at all on Impact Television, and it's really added to her mystique. Now, WWE would certainly hand Sue Young a microphone and have her cut promos in the middle of the ring, which would rid her character of any kind of mystery whatsoever. Impact Wrestling has even taken the gamble of repackaging her as Suzy, who in this case does speak, but could probably pull the trigger at any moment in bringing back the Undead Bride character if they really needed to. Eddie Edwards, the longest tenured member of the Impact Wrestling roster, was part of the extremely popular five-time TNA Tag Team Champions, the Wolves. While he arguably has been one of the best workers in the world, he was long associated with being just a tag team wrestler, and his run with the TNA World Championship, even though he beat Bobby Lashley for it, didn't do much to change people's minds. Eddie's character has obviously progressed tremendously, thanks in part to Sammy Callahan, but his initial character was a bit bland and clearly too vanilla for WWE programming. Impact was able to do what was needed creatively to make Eddie feel like a top star, and he'd be mid-card fodder on WWE television. The Wolves had a brief stint in NXT where Triple H said he already had dozens of guys just like them. I'm paraphrasing, of course. It's easy to imagine Eddie getting another run with the Impact World Championship, and he's become one of the faces of the company, something that he welcomes and embraces. 
WWE at best would give them a run with their meaningless US Championship. OVE, Ohio versus everything. Now don't get me wrong, Impact hasn't done OVE any favors considering they haven't been booked as the dominant heel stable that fans had hoped they would be. Taking weekly losses that Tessa Blanchard and a random partner of her choosing haven't exactly screamed dominance. Still, they have managed to remain relevant and a big part of Impact Wrestling programming with creative freedom, solid in-ring work, and some killer backstage segments. Let's face it, WWE doesn't exactly have a good track record when it comes to booking stables, but with Impact, they at least remain a featured part of the show. Now, Madman Fulton currently has never been pinned. He does face Tessa Blanchard next week, though. Jake and Dave are former Impact Tag Team Champions, and Sammy Callahan is the current Impact World Champion. With all that being said, OVE has had their share of favorable booking, but it's hard to imagine WWE giving them that same kind of focus. The Machine, Brian Cage, is the biggest, most imposing worker on the Impact Wrestling roster. Someone that a person like Vince McMahon would presumably salivate over. Now, Brian Cage once had an offer from NXT but turned it down in favor of Impact Wrestling and the flexibility it provided. Just because the machine is big and bad though, it doesn't mean that he would be booked well in the WWE. All you have to do is look at guys like Bobby Lashley and the man formerly known as Ethan Carter III to know that nothing is promised no matter what your resume includes or what you look like. Considering Lashley and EC3 had previous runs in WWE and are still booked like trash, one would have to assume that Brian Cage wouldn't be given any favors since he has no history with the company. It's difficult to imagine Brian Cage having the opportunity to main event WWE pay-per-views the way he has in Impact Wrestling. Rosemary. WWE wouldn't have the first clue on what to do with a character like Rosemary. And for anybody who thinks she would have any desire to portray a Sister Abigail character, then you truly don't know a damn thing about her. Impact fans have seen the character evolution of the Demon Assassin over the years, and WWE isn't really known for character or gimmick progression, therefore things get easily stale, especially with the way they oversaturate their talent. The Rosemary character has gotten a lot of mileage and is even one of the longest tenured stars on the roster, only exceeded by Eddie Edwards. Rosemary is arguably the most popular star in Impact Wrestling, and even her herself knows that she wouldn't have the same creative freedom in the WWE that she gets in Impact Wrestling. Although WWE has the most money and the largest platform to market their stars, they usually fail at it and a character like Rosemary would never truly flourish without her creative input being taken seriously. And finally, Tessa Blanchard. WWE fans have long clamored for Tessa to sign to their beloved company and feud with Charlotte Flair. The problem is, Charlotte is the chosen one of Vince McMahon and due to their similarities in backstories, gimmick, and even birthplace, it's unlikely that Tessa would be pushed on the same level as Flair with fear that she would get over more with the audience. Tessa Blanchard has been wrestling the best women from all over the world as opposed to Charlotte who was feuded on and off with the same handful of women in her entire wrestling career. Anyone who has heard Tessa Blanchard speak in an interview, you would know that she wants to create her own legacy, wrestle around the globe, win championships, and not have a company take credit for her accomplishments. Tessa's name has never been hotter than it currently is and she's getting ready to challenge Sammy Callahan for the Impact World Championship at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view, making it her second pay-per-view main event in less than a year. Although it's highly possible that Tessa ends up in the WWE at some point in her career, it's difficult right now to imagine it happening with the way she's currently having control over her own legacy. Thank you again for checking out 8 Impact Wrestling Stars that WWE would ruin here on YouTube. Now the Impact Lounge has been a growing brand on YouTube. We just surpassed 5,000 subscribers and hoping to hit 6,000 in the very near future. Now another part of the Impact Lounge is the podcasting side of the house, not just the YouTube side. For the most part, it's been the total non-stop Impact podcast, which is the best, most entertaining Impact Wrestling review show you're going to find along with my B-Side podcast, which I've sprinkled in once or twice a month. Now, going forward in 2020, we're also going to be adding Talking About with Terrence Williams and Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin. And I may be adding a few other podcasts 
here and there. So wherever you get your podcast content from, wherever you subscribe, just look up the Impact Lounge. And starting in 2020, you're going to be getting a lot more from the podcast side of the house, a lot more good reviews. And I'm going to talk about those podcasts a little bit more going forward on my next B-Side podcast. Thank you again for hanging out. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.